The modern superbike. It's the wedgie pulling, purple nurpling, wet willying bully of the road and the racetrack. For less than half the price of a family car, any clown can walk into a dealership and come out with a machine that accelerates from zero to 300 kilometers an hour in less than 20 seconds, meaning that you can see the face of God before your car driving neighbor can strap his squealing spawn into the back seat. Thanks to 120 years of one-upmanship between motorcycle companies, the superbikes of 2017 have never been so extreme. But thanks to careful design and clever electronics, they've also never been easier to ride. This is the latest in Suzuki's storied GSXR 1000 range, and I'd like to call attention to this foot peg because Lewis from Suzuki tells me that that's the part that carries over from last year's model. Ooh, and uh, fair go, that's some good foot peg. Everything else is brand spankers, because Suzuki has had some catching up to do in recent years. Not that the Jixxer has been slow, far from it, but there's a lot of people out there who have no idea what torque and horsepower actually mean, and who just go out and buy the bike with the most ponies. And Suzuki knows what it's like to be King Dingaling. They absolutely redefined the Superbike class in 2001, and they did it again with the amazing K5 model. Incidentally, I sort of accidentally bought myself one of those a couple of months ago terrific bike, absolutely mental. But this 2017 model, this is a whole different bum full of eels. Getting back to the pointy end of this loopy class in 2017 means you need to make more than 200 horsepower. On a fast racetrack like Phillip Island, that feels like nearly enough. On the road, if you can get the revs up into the party zone, it's f***ing burko. Now, it also needs to be fun under the speed limit, so Suzuki's built in some clever tech to beef up the mid-range, like connector pipe butterfly valves between the exhaust headers and dual stage air intakes. And variable valve timing, that's a fun one. For low end torque, you want to advance the intake valve timing. For high end horsepower, you want to retard it. This new Jixxer has a set of steel balls sitting in grooves in the intake sprocket. As it starts spinning faster, centrifugal force makes the balls fling out in all directions. It's the same theory that makes the pommel horse so popular at the Olympics. And as they move outwards, they retard the valve timing so that by the time you're doing 10,000 RPM, it is smashing out horsepower at a truly horrifying rate. It's still not the talkiest bike in the world though. Jixxers, like the very finest of college sweethearts, are screamers by their very nature. But the mid-range picks up earlier and stronger than something like the BMW S1000RR, and that's where you'll be using it on the road most of the time. Personally, because I'm an idiot, I'd like to down gear it for an even nuttier ride on the road. I mean, I don't need to go 300 k's an hour all that often. So one tooth down on the front sprocket, three up on the back, and if a butterfly farts within five meters of the throttle, it'll be up on the back wheel. That's my kind of bike. But look, even with the standard gearing, this bike has excellent manners around town. In fact, this Jixxer makes a terrific commuter, mainly because you can fold these snapback mirrors in and make your elbows the widest part of the bike. I could confidently lane split this thing feet up through the gap in Madonna's teeth if I didn't know what had been through there first. I haven't touched the suspension settings, but I've already got more faith in this front tyre than I have in the concept of faith itself. The limits of this bike just seem so far away. Ah, you're set up for a corner, <laughs> and then you find yourself, next thing you know you're on the other side, feeling like you've hardly leaned the thing over at all. With your front wheel just blowing at the sky, and the bike's going, shit man. I, uh, I brought some extra sticky rubber over on the sides of those tyres there. I, uh, I thought you might want to use a bit of it. But I'm here going, f*** you bike! You are not tempting me into riding faster than I can see. You're just not. And 
and the power. Put this in A mode with all the granny buttons turned off and it just feels like it wants to accelerate out from underneath you. Like it doesn't give a single solitary shit whether you're still on the back when the petrol runs out. It is extraordinary. If you're riding this bike like you mean it, A mode is terrific. The fuel comes on smoothly, the acceleration is stunning. On the highway, you might want to look at B mode because A mode can be a little bit of a bucking bronco if you try and sit at a constant speed. C mode, that's for people who really shouldn't be riding superbikes at all. There's other electronics too, built around a continental six axis inertial measurement unit that constantly tracks your pitch, roll and yaw, which in biker terms means your wheelie angle, your lean angle and how much the back wheel's trying to overtake the front wheel at any given moment. So, you get an ABS system that can keep your back wheel on the ground if the bike starts to stop you, and a 10 stage lean angle sensitive traction control system so you can bang the throttle open in the middle of the corner if you want. But don't do that. Please, just don't. For another few grand you can get the GSX-R1000R, which adds things like cornering ABS, launch control, fancy balance free shower suspension, a quick shifter and a super light lithium battery. Now I've heard the quick shifter's a ripper, but Frankly, the standard model is a raging weapon without it anyway. In terms of comfort, yeah, not terrible. Fuel economy, a decent 6.5 litres per 100 k's for both of you guys that care about that. Practicality, smashes it. Check it out, if I get the angle just right, I can fit my phone under the seat. But let's look at the big picture here. Within 15 years, cars are going to be driving themselves. The kids of tomorrow are going to give up on getting licenses just like the kids of yesterday gave up on riding horses. Without being needed for transport, who knows what happens to motorcycles? There's a chance that this era right now is the best we're ever going to have it on two wheels and that future historians in a sterile, safe dystopia will look back and shake their heads wondering how we were ever allowed to take a monster like this big Jexa out on the road. When that day comes, do you want to be telling your grandkids you were pootling around on some friendly little parallel twin? or locking horns with a fire-breathing, tire-shredding beast that can keep up with a bullet train? One day, people are going to think back on the name GSXR like we think about bikes like the Bruff Superior. Bikes for real, hairy-chested men and women from a wilder and more adventurous time. I want to be that leather-helmeted, mustachioed wild man in that sepia-tinted photo. And this is the kind of bike I'll need for the job. Well, that's my excuse anyway. <laughs>